So I'll be talking about vernal keratoconjunctivitis, how to diagnose, manage, and when to refer. That's that's a very good uh, concept that has been started by this uh, webinar, how to diagnose, manage, and when to refer. Now, uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis is a chronic bilateral seasonal allergic inflammatory disease of eye, which involves both the tarsal and bulbar conjunctiva. And the term is vernal, which is a misnomer. Vernal means spring, related to spring, but mostly it happens in summer. Some people say that, why not call it summer Qatar or things like that. So it's a misnomer. Uh, and a lot of such cases are even, you know, uh, some of them, they happen in seasonal variation, but a lot of them are perennial. Mostly it happens in school going children uh, around four to seven years of age, it starts and then usually dissolves by puberty. So you have to be careful in managing these patients till the time of puberty. It may be associated with atopy, uh, male preponderance is seen and there can be variable geographic distribution uh, in which there's high prevalence in Mediterranean countries, Africa, Middle East, Japan, India, and South America. Immunological factor that is type one reaction is the factor behind it. And there can be environmental factors like UV light and uh, you know, allergens in, present in the atmosphere. And of course, there are some individuals who are genetically more susceptible to these allergens. Uh, as I said, it is uh, it can be seasonal, but uh, a good chunk of patients are perennial and they keep having it throughout uh, the year. And that is why they need to be managed very carefully. So how to diagnose, that is the key. And diagnosis is mainly done clinically. It is done based on the symptoms because the patient complains of itching, which is really the hallmark, which can be mild to intense. And it is exacerbated by wind, dust, bright light, hot weather sitting in the AC, going outside, playing, like children complain that when they go in the playground, they come back and with a red eye and itching a lot. Then some of them, they do complain of photophobia. And then of course, there can be ropey discharge, early morning stickiness of lids, watering redness, as I said earlier, foreign body sensation. And on examination, it is very essential if a child comes to you with complaint of itching, you should avert the lids. That's the most important thing. And you see the papillary hyperplasia, uh, which is so prominent, uh, as you can see in this picture. And uh, large papillae, giant papillae, more than one millimeter size, cobblestoning, all these things are hallmark of uh, uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Horn spots are these, these are you know focal white gelatinous uh, dots at the limbus all around, uh, which consists of degenerated epithelial cells and eosinophils, pseudogerent toxin because of the lipid deposition can be seen. There can be membrane or pseudomembrane formation, which is called maxwell leon sign, and there can be superficial corneal neovascularization. And many times you see that the sheen of the conjunctiva and the interpalpable area uh, is lost because of chronic VKC, and there's increased pigmentation of this interpalpebral conjunctiva. So as I said, the, it can be bulbar, it can be palpebral, and in many of these cases, you have a mixed picture. Various ways of uh, you know, uh, grading has been given. This is one of the grading system. The grading is basically uh, uh, done to give you an idea uh, about uh, how to manage, how to go ahead, whether we have to go aggressive with a severe grade, or if it's a mild one, we may not be that aggressive. So some more grading system are there, which can be used for documentation. Uh, as far as investigation is concerned, uh, one can do immunological tests, but uh, many times these children uh, can be uh, allergic to multiple antigens, and that's why immunological tests many times are not routinely done as far as routine um, uh, practice, routine management is concerned. But the, these, some of these patients can develop some uh, sequelae, some problems, because of chronic rubbing, etc., and then uh, the patients can have keratoconus or form plus keratoconus. So corneal topography and anterior segment OCT will give you an idea of the earliest changes that uh, may be seen uh, because of this. So as I said, there can be various sequelae like uh, limbal stem cell deficiency, corneal scarring can be seen. There can be shield ulcer. There can be steroid-induced cataract and glaucoma because of long-term use of steroid. Ptosis can also be seen because of uh, constant rubbing and long-term use of steroid and dry eye. And of course, keratoconus is something which is very, very important as far as the sequelae of BKC is concerned. 
So the management uh, in, includes the uh, most important thing that is the counseling of the parents. The parents have to be counseled that the child should not be rubbing too much because rubbing can lead to sequelae, can lead to kinetogonus, can lead to ptosis and all these things. So rubbing should be avoided. Parents have to be vigilant that the child, whether it's by therapy, whether it's improving, whether the rubbing is less or it's more. So all these things come into the parent counseling. That is very important. Uh, pharmacologic therapy uh, is the key and surgical therapy is done in some of the scenarios. So coming to pharmacological therapy, uh, earlier we used to use topical antihistamines and mast cell stabilizers, but now we have the dual acting agents which are mostly used like olopatadine or alcaftadine. And these are the ones which are preferred by most. For long-term therapy, if the patient is not responding to these, if there is a severe VKC, uh, 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 then uh, immunomodulators like cyclosporine and tacrolimus are very useful. Cyclosporine can be used on a long-term basis. Tacrolimus also can be used. Uh, my personal uh, uh, preference, if it's very severe, then I may combine both tacrolimus and cyclosporine. Some of the patients, they do complain of stinging because of tacrolimus. So maybe I'll use it for some time and continue uh, the patient on cyclosporine on a long-term basis. And if it's a very severe uh, VKC, then of course we have to start topical steroid in the form of uh, low-potency steroid initially if we don't have too much of cobblestoning, like fluoromethylone, lotopredinol. But if it's too much of cobblestoning, large papillae, then in that case, it may not respond. And maybe a short term, short burst of high potency steroid may be useful. Or we may even think of giving uh, systemic medications in these cases. Uh, only thing is when we are using steroid, we have to be careful of uh, you know, uh, looking for uh, complications like glaucoma and cataract. Systemic medications are given in the form of uh, anti-allergics like fixofenadine, montelukast, levocetrizine, because many of these uh, children, they, are, they do have some history of systemic allergy as well. And sometimes with topical medication, if it's not helping, then you may have to go for systemic medication in order to dissolve the inflammation and uh, the allergy. And uh, systemic steroid is reserved for some of the cases which are not responding or those who are asthmatic then they may be given steroid by various modes and uh, tablet steroid can also be given. Supratarsal injection of steroid is something which is very useful, particularly when you have large cobblestoning, you have the risk of uh, you know, shield ulcer. So in order to pre prevent that in, and in order to uh, result in resolution of these large cobblestoning of papillae, supratarsal injection of uh, triamcinolone uh, uh, 20 milligram, 0.5 ml is really very useful. You avert the lead, and then go one millimeter uh, uh, above the uh, superior margin of the tarsus in order to avoid the marginal arcade of blood vessels. And you can inject uh, 0.25 ml at one point and 0.25 ml at the other point. Now, some people do use xylocaine as well, 0.25 ml of xylocaine first and then inject triamcinolone. I don't prefer that because in any case, it is causing stretching. And uh, even by xylocaine, there are a couple of... Uh, uh, you know, reports of uh, muscle toxicity. So I don't prefer, I just simply give 0.25 ml at one point and 0.25 at the other point. A couple of uh, studies have shown shave excision of giant papillae and use of amniotic uh, membrane uh, with good results. And uh, if there's a shield ulcer, in that case, uh, you may have to uh, remove this plaque. As you can see, this is a case of shield ulcer because of uh, mechanical rubbing. So what you do is you remove the plaque and if you uh, see that the there's a thick uh, gutter, then you may have to do a multi-layered amniotic membrane and then an overlay of amniotic membrane. But if the gutter is not deep, then just a single uh, overlay of amniotic membrane will be uh, helpful in managing the shield ulcer. And the patient is uh, uh, simultaneously also managed for the allergy, like all those anti-allergic medications are given both topical and if needed, systemic. Uh, then the question arises that when one should refer a patient to a cornea specialist. Now, not only to a cornea specialist, if somebody develops a ptosis, which can happen not only because of uh, repeated rubbing, but also because of, uh, you know, occasionally has been reported after supratarsal steroid injection as well. So uh, first of all, you have to be really careful. You just, uh, when, you are, when you are giving a supratarsal steroid, you just, you go one millimeter above the ma margin of the tarsus and you go just under the conjunctiva 
don't uh, go deeper, otherwise you will damage the muscles and it should be between the conjunctiva and the Muller's muscle. And the second thing is that if at all the patient has a ptosis, then you may follow up the patient, see if it's resolving, if it's not, then you have to refer the patient to an oculoplasty person. And uh, if the patient develops keratoconus or there is some suspicion of keratoconus, if the patient develops a shield ulcer or a limbal stem cell deficiency or some corneal scarring, or in spite of all your efforts, it's not getting appropriately controlled, then it is wise to refer the patient to a cornea specialist. So in conclusion, vernal keratoconjunctivitis is a condition which is very commonly seen, uh, particularly in children uh, of the school-going age. And uh, a combination therapy is something that is advocated, combination of uh, you know, topical a uh, dual acting agent along with steroids along with uh, you know some immunomodulators long term therapy is, is is something which is required in these cases that is why you have to be really careful while you are managing uh, concept of tapering of steroid has to be understood when you are using it uh, frequent follow up is essential you should try to prevent complications and if at all there's it's happening you have to refer the patient to a specific person and one of the most important thing is counseling of the parents in order to get optimal outcome of the therapy. Thank you very much for your patient listening.